Hey everyone, this is Mr. Westar, and this is our unit on selection sort. Uh, we're going to take a look at the basic structure of a sorting algorithm, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty details of how selection sort works, and uh, a little bit of a discussion about the relative efficiency of this algorithm. Just to review though, uh, this unit is all about sorting and searching, and in particular, uh, sorting means that we're going to take the items in a collection and just put them in some meaningful order. Uh, ideally, we want our algorithms to be both effective, meaning that they work all the time, and efficient, meaning that they uh, work quickly and don't take up much space. Most of the sorting methods that we're going to write are going to start with the same basic form, which is a method that takes a void method that takes two parameters. One is the array of items that we're sorting, and the second is the number of things that are actually in the array because we're going to be working with packed arrays here. Now a couple other things to think about. Most of the algorithms that we uh, cover are going to involve looping. They're all going to have to have iteration in some way, either with a loop or using recursion. And when you're analyzing all of these algorithms, you should ask yourself, after every time through the loop, which part of my array is actually sorted now and which part of my array is still not yet sorted. And you'll see an example of that at the end of this when we look at selection sort running in the debugger. Last thing before we get to selection sort is it's important for you to understand the correct way to swap two items in an array. Because uh, sometimes when people first start out they make the mistake of saying, oh okay, AR index 1 gets AR index 2, AR index 2 gets AR index 1. Well if you do that, unfortunately it won't work because the first assignment is just going to blow away the value of whatever you um, copied over. And so what you need to do is use a temporary variable to kind of act as a middleman. And so you're going to assign index uh, 1 to temp, then you're going to assign index 2 to index 1, and then you're going to take temp and stick it back in index 2. And that way you can preserve the value of both array elements. Okay, let's get to selection sort. Selection sort gets its name from this idea that what you're going to do um, each time through the outer loop is you're going to find the next biggest or smallest item, depending on how you sort, and you're going to place it in the correct spot in the array. So if you're searching for the first, um, we'll say, smallest item in the array, then you're going to place that in box number zero and you're going to find the second biggest, uh, second smallest item and place it in box 1. And so on and so on and so forth until eventually you get to the end of the array and there's only one unsorted item left and since everything else is sorted, it must be sorted too. So, like some of the other algorithms that we're going to look at, uh, selection sort actually requires two loops because inside, in order to find that smallest, next smallest item, you have to use another loop. So let's see what that pseudocode looks like. Uh, here we are, we've got our typical two parameters, the array and the number of elements. We're going to have to keep track of a couple of different uh, pointers into the array, or uh, variables that keep track of certain indexes. The outer loop is going to have a variable called swap index, and that's uh, the job of that variable is to keep track of which position we're trying to find the correct item for. So it's going to start at zero because we're going to find the smallest item in the array first and it's going to go all the way up to the end of the array. Next uh, point of variable we're going to keep track of is called low index and for each time through the outside loop low index is going to always keep track of the index of the smallest item that we've found um, in the part of the array that we're looking at. So it's going to start at swap index because um, we only care about that part of the array. Everything before swap index we've already finished sorting and you'll see that in the demo in a minute. So uh, we're going to assume that the lowest item is the first item um, that we're looking at and then what we're going to have is a, a an inside loop uh, with a third pointer variable which we're calling temp index here and that's going to again start at swap index and go all the way to the end of the array. And what we do every time through the inner loop is we say, okay, is that item, is the item that's um, pointed to by the loop index, smaller than 
um, AR low index, which is the smallest thing that we've found, found so far. So if the item that we that um, if the next item in the inner loop is the smallest thing we've ever found, then we have to replace low index with the value of the inner loop index, because that means the temp index is now um, it's the new smallest thing. So every time our inner loop is done, we know that low index is now uh, pointing at the smallest uh, thing in the array that we we're looking for. So when that's done, we can take that item and we can put it in um, the correct spot in the array. And remember, that's the job of the swap index variable. It keeps track of where we need to put that next smallest item. Then we finish with our outer loop, we go back up to the top, and then we start searching for the next smallest thing, and the next smallest thing, and so on and so on and so forth, until eventually uh, we get to the end of the array. All right, before we get into efficiency, let's see what selection sort looks like in action. So I've got an array here with a selection sort method, and when I run that through the debugger, uh, what I want you to notice is that we're going to, um, as we go through our code here, we've got our array. And again, remember we talked about always trying to consider what is the smallest, um, or which part of our array is sorted and which part of it still needs to get sorted. So if we keep running through our code, what we're going to see is that um, We've got swap index at zero, we've got low index at zero, because again we're assuming that this four is the smallest thing we're going to be looking for. But now we have an inner loop index which is also equal to zero. So watch as temp index keeps increasing. It's going to keep increasing until we find an item, in this case two, which is less than the lowest thing we found so far, which is four. And so that's going to replace the value of low index with the next, the new lowest array index. Temp index is going to keep going until we find another one, which in this case is index 5, since 1 is less than 2. So we're going to have to replace low index with temp index again and keep going through the array. And that's going to keep going until uh, we get to the end of the array. And now what we have to do is to take item number 5 and swap it with whatever's in item number 0. We're going to take this 1 and swap it with the 4. So that goes through... and now we've swapped 1 and 4. So notice now that element 0, which is what swap index is equal to, now contains the smallest item so far. So if you want to kind of draw a big dividing line down here, um, element 0 is sorted, everything else still not sorted yet. But if we were to sort of fast forward uh, and look at what happens after each time through the outer loop, we will see, okay, now the 2 is in the correct place, now the 3 is in the correct place, now the 4 is in the correct place, so each time through the loop we find the next smallest thing and we put it in the correct place. And that's how selection sort works. So, getting back to efficiency, uh, unfortunately selection sort is not a very efficient algorithm. It's effective, works every time, like a charm, but it's slow. And if you think about it, why is it slow? Well, if you look back at the pseudocode, uh, you can probably see why. We spend an awful lot of time going over the same data over and over and over again. It's kind of like searching for a needle in a haystack because we don't know every time through the loop what the next lowest thing is that we're looking for. And so we have to waste a lot of time visiting the same data multiple times. Also, each time through that outer loop, we only move one element into the correct place. So that means uh, that we're really not doing a whole lot of work each time through the outer loop. So because of those reasons, uh, there are a lot of other algorithms that are much faster than selection sort. Another in interesting question to think about with most of our sorting algorithms is what type of array would make selection sort work in the slowest amount of time? And it turns out it really doesn't matter. Selection sort is just generally bad no matter what you give it. Um, we've got two for loops in this uh, algorithm, and they don't care what the array looks like. They're going to keep running the same amount every single time, which means 
Unfortunately, that selection sorter is going to run equally slowly no matter what we give it. But it does work, so that's something. All right, um, just to recap really quickly, we talked about in this lesson the basic structure of a sorting method and how to swap data inside of a sorting method. And we also talked about um, how selection sort works by repeatedly choosing the next smallest item in the array and putting it in its correct place. Um, so uh, selection sort is not very fast, but it does work. All right, you're all set.